Welcome to the Linda tutorial on the correct adjustment of mag welding machines. Today we would like to show you how to set up a mag welding machine properly. We hope you enjoy this tutorial. Today we'll be welding 10 mm or 0.4 inch mild steel with a blasted surface using Corgon 18, a gas mixture comprising 82% argon and 18% CO2. First of all, connect the pressure regulator. Simply screw it on by hand and tighten using a wrench. Next, connect the gas hose to the pressure regulator and open the main valve. As we are using mild steel as the parent material, we recommend using low alloy silicon doped wire as the consumable. Place the wire spool on the welding machine's wire spool adapter. Before threading the wire, check that you are using the correct wire feed rollers for the diameter of the wire. Once you have cut the end of the wire from the spool, thread it into the wire feeder. Hold the wire tightly. If you let go, it might quickly unravel from the spool. Leave approximately 5 to 10 centimeters or 2 to 4 inches of wire extending out of the main connection point. This will make it easier to connect the torch later on. Once you have connected the hose assembly to the main connection point and tightened the coupling nut, connect the ground cable. Now turn on the device and turn the main weld machine switch to 10. At the touch of a button, the wire is fed through the hose to the front of the torch. When the wire is visible, attach the contact tube and then the gas nozzle. Now let's look at the gas flow meter. This device measures the actual volume of gas that flows out of the nozzle outlet. This measuring process is very important for ensuring a good welding result as the amount of gas flowing out of the nozzle may vary from the display on the pressure regulator. Place the gas flow meter vertically onto the gas nozzle. The gas flow is based on the diameter of the wire. In the case of mild steel, you will require approximately 10 litres of gas for each millimetre of wire diameter, or 1 cubic foot for 0.1 inches. To adjust the welding machine, you first have to select whether you want to use two-stage welding, which is suitable for short weld seams or for riveting, or four-stage welding, with additional control of gas pre- and post-flow time, which is suitable for longer weld seams. The welding device we are using in this tutorial lets us set the wire feed speed we need. In other words, we can check the speed at which we want the wire to come out of the gas nozzle before welding. This enables us to avoid problems with ignition. Next, we are going to set the gas pre-flow time. You may be wondering why we need to do this. Quite simply, this setting prevents pores from forming. We recommend that you set 0.1 seconds of pre-flow time per meter or 3.3 feet of hose assembly. If you're using a 4 meter assembly, for example, we recommend a pre-flow time of 0.4 seconds. Looking now at the gas post-flow time, users who are new to welding should take particular care not to move the torch away too quickly after welding as the weld metal will still be glowing. To protect the hot metal from the ambient atmosphere and achieve a perfect welding result, set the gas post-flow time to between 1 and 2 seconds. The final setting is for burn back. This prevents the consumable from burning onto the contact tube or the workpiece. And that's all there is to it. Once these settings have been made, the device is ready for welding. Before you start, however, make sure you're wearing the right personal protective equipment and have attached the ground cable to the workpiece. And on the subject of welding, let's look at some of the reasons why your weld seam might not turn out as expected. In this case, you can see that the weld seam is concave. This is because the wire feed speed is too slow. If the weld seam is convex, the wire feed speed is too high. A good weld seam looks like this. We hope that you have learned some useful tips about how to correctly set up your mag welding machine in this tutorial. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions.